The program we'll be reviewing is called the JBL Risk Manager and what this actually is it's a money management type of program to help you with your trading. It'll help in determining what the correct position size is, where to get out of your trades, and also to analyze your portfolio. Did you know that more than 90 percent of new traders fail in the market? This is a pretty scary statistic but if you plan ahead and work hard, you don't have to be part of that 90% group. There's a lot of different reasons that new traders fail in the markets. For example, maybe they have a poor strategy to begin with, or maybe they don't understand exactly how the markets work and they have a lack of trading education. A common problem among new traders is over trading. They're so excited about trading in the first place that sometimes they trade too much and without a solid game plan, the losses can really add up quickly. The creator of the JBL Risk Manager is Joseph Barrington Liu. And what Joseph told me, what he believes the reason why there's such a high failure rate among new traders, is number one, a lot of new traders have a hard time admitting that they've made a mistake. They get into a trade, the trade starts to go against them, and they don't know where to get out of the trade. And once you start to hope that the trade turns around back in your favor, it's probably too late. And the second reason is, is that a lot of new traders really have no idea of what real money management is. And this, of course, is where the JBL program can really help you out. How often do you really need to be right when trading? 70%, 80%, 90%? A lot of newer traders in the market are looking for systems that have very, very high win-loss ratios. Did you know that some of the best traders only are right about 50% of the time? So the question is, is if you're only correct 50% of the time, how in the world are you going to make money? And the answer is, is learning how to calculate what's called the trade expectancy. This is a very important calculation that every trader should be aware of and know how to calculate. The trade expectancy is calculated by taking the percentage of winning trades, you multiply it times your average win, Take your percentage of losing trades and multiply them times the average loss and you subtract those two numbers. So for example, let's say that you have a trading strategy that is only correct 40% of the time, but on those winning trades you average $600. And on the losing trades you're wrong 60% of the time, but your average loss is $200. Well after calculating that formula, what you'll find is that the trade expectancy is a positive hundred and twenty dollars and this is what you really need to know so trying to find a trading strategy that is producing ninety percent winners is nowhere near as important as having a positive trade expectancy out of your system so with that in mind let me suggest some new goals for you in my opinion i think you should actually strive to be the best loser that you can be and be quick to take your losses a lot of time it's hard to admit that you're wrong in a trade, but the sooner that you can cut those losses off, the sooner you can move on to another trade. And more importantly, let your winners run. I'm sure you probably have heard this before about cutting your losses off and letting your winners run, but the question is really how do you really do that? And with the JBL, this is exactly what it can help you do. It objectively manages your portfolio so you're no longer guessing on where you should be getting out of your trade. There's two major rules when using the JBL Risk Manager and the first rule is never risk more than 20% of your capital on any one position. So for example, if you've got a $100,000 account, you're not going to buy more than $20,000 in one particular position. If you've got a $10,000 account, you're not going to spend more than $2,000 on a particular position. And the second rule is never risk more than 2% of your capital on any one trade. So if you have a $10,000 account, 2% 2 of $10,000 is $200. The maximum risk on any one position then is $200. Now let's talk a little bit about money management. There's a number of different types of money management and practices and theories and so forth out there and there's been a lot written about it. But a very well known money management system or strategy is what's called a Martingale money management system. And with a Martingale system what you do is you actually trade more when you're losing. This type of strategy actually appeals more to gamblers. And the idea is, is that if you lose on your first trade you double up on the second trade hoping to make that back. 
While in theory this might sound like it might work, the problem is, is that if you have a series of losing trades, this can wipe out your account very fast to say the least. In my opinion, this is a horrible idea when trading. A much better idea to use when trading is what's called the anti-Martingale system. With the anti-Martingale system, what you're doing is you're doing the exact opposite. And that is you're trading less when you're losing and you're trading more when you're winning. Now let me give you an example here of why you might actually want to use this. For the first example, I want to show you a chart here using no money management. This chart was taken out of a book called Universal Principles of Successful Trading. And in this chart, we're looking at an equity curve of a trading account. And this trading account started off with initial starting equity of $20,000 with a $4,000 margin and 100 maximum contracts. It was trading the Japanese yen. There were 326 different trades placed. And over that period of time, as you can see, the system did very well. And over those 326 trades, it generated $250,000 in profits. The return on the initial investment was 12 and a half times, meaning that $20,000 grew 12 and a half times by the end of this chart. Now let me show you a chart here using what's called the anti-Martingale fixed percentage method. There's a number of different ways to trade the anti-Martingale money management systems, but the one that's used in the JBL Risk Manager is based off of the fixed percentage method, and this is hands down the most popular method among traders. The fixed percentage method keeps the same percentage throughout the entire period. Now looking at this example, the trader took the same trading strategy, 326 trades. In this case, he started with a $30,000 account, 4,000 for initial margin and a fixed percentage risk of 2%. And how this system worked out over those 326 trades is that the account grew from $30,000 all the way up to $20 million. An absolutely astronomical return as compared to the first chart. Now while this is hypothetical, you can see the results can vary dramatically and this is exactly the reason why you might want to use a money management system when you're trading. The point being is that if we're going to risk our hard money in the markets, we want to be rewarded when we're correct, and we want to be hurt the least when we're incorrect. And that's exactly what using a money management system will help you do. So let me give you some examples of how we'd actually use this. So what I've got here is I've got a chart of a stock, and the symbol is FAST. Now what I've done is I've adjusted the data to give us an idea of exactly how this would have played out and how we would then use the JBL to help us manage this particular trade. You'll see on the last bar of this chart we have a MACD buy signal. And let's just say hypothetically that this is a strategy that I like to trade and I want to take this particular trade and I want to use a JBL to help me. So the date of this last bar for example is December 21st, 2011 and I want to buy at the opening of the next day. So we'll open up JBL. So the first section up here is a section that will actually show you your trades that are currently open. This section will show you the trades that you've closed and then down here this will tell you a little bit about your account. So let's go ahead and set up some trades here. The first thing you need to do is we need to create a portfolio. So you click on this button down here in the lower left hand corner give your portfolio a name and let's call this our JBL demo. I'll click on the create new portfolio button and then the next thing I want to do is click on the settings button next to that. Now what the settings is going to do it's going to allow us to control how much we get charged by our broker, where we want to place our trailing stops and how they're going to be calculated and where our data is going to be stored. So first of all let's take a look at this money management slash trade sizing box. This allows us to control how much we're going to risk of our capital on any one trade. You'll see that the default is 2%, meaning that the most we're going to risk on any individual position is 2%. And the trade size of any position is set to 19%. Remember before how I told you that the rule is to never trade more than 20% of your account in one position? Well, what he does is he actually bumps that down to 19%. The reason being is, is that if you're trading 20% of your account on one position, the most open trades that you could have would be five trades. 
but instead of trading 20%, if you traded 19% on each one of those trades, you'd still have 5% of your money left in the account in case you need it for some other reason. So again, the default is going to be a 2% maximum risk on a trade, and the position size is going to be 19%. These numbers then can be adjusted based on the amount of money that you have in your account. And of course everything is customizable inside these levels. Now over here on the right hand side, this is what's going to control how much you get charged by your broker. So for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just change the amount that I get charged by my broker to $10 so we can calculate very quickly our costs when we're going through these trades. So when I get into a long trade, I get charged $10. And when I get into a short trade, I also get charged $10. And again, these numbers can be adjusted based on the size of trades that you have. So if you get charged a different amount for different amounts of trades, you can enter it in here, or you can also adjust it by percentage levels over here on the right-hand side. Now up here at the top, you'll see that we've got another section up here, which is called Profit Taking Slash Trailing Profit Stops. JBL actually gives you four different types of stops to work with inside the program. And this window allows you to control two of those stops, the trailing stop and then the stop percentage. First, let's talk about the trailing stop. The trailing stop that comes with the program is calculated off of an indicator called the ATR, or Average True Range. And the Average True Range indicator will actually adjust based on the security's volatility. This is a very good calculation to use when determining where to set these different levels. Now there's three different settings for this trailing stop. You can choose to have it to be a short term trailing stop, a medium term, or a long term. And based on which one you select, you'll see that these multipliers over here and the stop percentage also get adjusted based on your outlook. Short term is designed for people that only hold positions for a few days. Medium term is for positions in weeks and long term are for positions in months. So for this example today, I'm just going to use the medium term. And by choosing the medium term, that will adjust our trailing stop accordingly. Now the other type of stop inside this window is called a stop percentage. And what the stop percentage allows us to do is adjust how far we're willing to see the closing price of the security drop before we get out of the trade. Now before down here, remember I said that the maximum risk on any particular trade is 2%. Well, that's 2% of your account. If, for example, that the share price dropped, in this case, 10% or more, but you didn't get stopped out because you didn't hit the 2% max risk, this would kick you out of the trade as well. So those are three of the stops. Down here we have a max risk percent, we have a trailing stop, and we have a stop percentage, and then the fourth type of stop that's included as well is a time stop. And the way that the time stop works, if you don't hit your break even price within 10 days, it'll recommend that you exit out of the trade. And the reasoning is, is that if you haven't hit your break even during that period of time, your money's probably better spent in another position. Now the last thing we're going to do inside this window is we need to tell it where our data lies inside of Metastock. The way that this program gets its updates is it grabs Metastock data from its local data files. So in other words, when you download your end of day data into a data file and save it on your computer, this is where it's going to get it from. And how you tell it where those data files are located is you click on the Add Directory button down here at the bottom and you select where they're stored on your computer. So by default, your data file should be inside of your C drive and then Metastock Data. And then underneath Metastock Data, for example, you can see that I've got quite a few different data files loaded on my computer. The two data files that I'm going to grab, the first one I'm going to grab is just called My Stocks. I've got about 500 securities inside of this folder plus a few indices, so I'll go ahead and grab that one, click on OK, and then I'm going to add another data directory by clicking on the Add Directory. Again, I'll click on my Metastock Data folder, scroll down and find another folder called the NASDAQ 100, and I'll add that one as well. Once I'm happy with the settings inside of this window, I'll click on the Save Settings button next thing we need to do is we need to click on this Manage Capital button down here at the bottom. This is going to allow us to determine how much money is going to be placed in the account. 
For our examples today, I'm going to use a starting account of $10,000 to try to keep things as simple and straightforward as possible. I'll change the date that it was deposited to 2010 because I'm going to show you a lot of historical trades here and how they would have played out. So I'll go ahead and deposit that into the account. And now you'll see that that's reflected down here in the bottom. So now we're ready to place a trade in the account. So let's go back into Metastock and let's again review what we were going to do. We're going to use a real simple strategy of just using the MACD indicator and buying and selling when these lines cross each other. On this particular bar, which is December 21st, 2011, we got a MACD buy signal. So the idea is, is that we want to buy on the next bar or the opening of the next time period. So going back to the JBL, we're going to simulate that we're at December 21st, 2011. So the first thing we want to do is we want to click on New Trade. And this is where we can enter in our information about the trade. Now for the symbol, I'll go ahead and click in that box and what that'll do is it'll launch the select security dialog. And down here underneath the security window, you can just type in the symbol if you know what it is. So I'll type in FAST, hit my enter key, and that'll fill out some information here for us. Now you'll see that there's a sector box that's highlighted and he recommends that you fill out the sector of these securities. And the reason being is that way you can keep track of the sectors that you're in and you don't get too heavy or overweighted in one particular sector. So this particular company is in the building materials so I'll just type building. And then down here at the bottom it also gives you a trade diary and this is pretty helpful so you can make some quick notes about your about this particular trade. And I'll just say that I bought it because of a MACD crossover. Next underneath the buy date if you click on that you just need to navigate to what the date is that we're going to be buying it. So again we're going to simulate that this is December 21st 2011. We're going to buy it at the opening of the next trading day. So I need to go back here on my calendar back to December 2011. We're going to choose December 22nd because that's the day we're going to buy it. We'll click on OK and of course we don't know what the price is going to be on December 22nd. But based on the closing price of December 21st, it's saying that we should buy 43 shares of this particular security. So we'll take its recommendation and we'll enter in the quantity of 43 so we know exactly how many shares we're going to buy in the next day. So I hit my enter key and you'll see that it figures out my brokerage costs. And over here on the right hand side, it'll give me the total cost of this transaction. Then down here at the bottom, you'll see our initial stop loss is set at 2% at or $200. So in this case, we've got a $10,000 account. Our maximum risk on this trade is going to be $200. Our break even is $43.59. And in this example, we can ignore the day's hell because again, I went backward in time here. This is actually taking a look at our current day as opposed to this, this point here in time. The initial stop is $38.93. Now this calculation is taking into account our maximum risk and that if the price moves to $38.93 including our commissions we're going to hit our maximum risk of $200 and that's why it's recommending that we put a stop in at $38.93. So let's go ahead and save this trade by clicking on the save trade button down here. So now let's say that we went ahead and got the opening price on December 22nd and let's see how that affects the data. Okay, I went into my data file and now I updated my data through December 22nd. So here in the middle of our screen, we can click on this refresh data. We can open up our trade by double clicking on it. And now you'll see we have some information now posted here underneath December 22nd. So let's say that we got the trade actually at 43.11. We got it at the opening price. You'll see that this field here was filled in based on yesterday's close. So I'll adjust that to 43.11, hit my enter key, and that'll adjust our information. You'll see again that our stop is set at 38.92, and you'll see that the other calculations for the other stops are listed here as well. Here's a percentage stop and the ATR stop. A good thing to note about these other stops is that these other stops won't become active until the price hits at least break even. And again, what is break even? Well, we can see that right here in this box. The break even price is 43.58. So unless the price hits 43.58, these other stops won't come into play. But as soon as it does hit break even, 
then the stop closer to the price will then be the active stop. So now let's fast forward here. What I'll do is I'll update the data through maybe a, a month of information here to see how this kind of played out. So again, I'll save my trade down here. And so I added about a month of data to this folder. I'll click on my refresh data here again and I'll open up my trade. And now you'll see that a lot of more information has been filled out here. And you'll see that these red boxes now are highlighting which stop it's actually using. So since the red box jumped from the stop loss level to the ATR stop, I know that I traded through my break even level and this is now the active one. So in this case, the, the next day it was set at 41.59, then 41.99 and so forth. The way that the trailing stops work is that if you're in a long position and the prices are moving in your favor or moving up, the trailing stop will ratchet up. And the idea is, is that if the prices move upward and then they reverse, you'll get stopped out at a higher price. These stops will never move down in a long position. They'll either stay at the same level or move up. So as I scroll down here, we can see the timeline and how this played out. You'll see that on January 18th, we got an exit signal. And the reason why we got an exit signal is because our stop was set at 45.65 and the price traded through that particular level. So it's recommending that we get out at the next trading day. So let's go ahead and close this trade out and let's say that we took its advice and we got out at the next opening. In this case we can see that the price on January 19th was 45.80 so let's exit out or sell our shares at that price. So to finish that out down here at the bottom underneath the sell date We'll go ahead and click in that box and you select that particular date. So again, I'm going to go to January 19th, 2012. We'll click on OK. And then the price was 4580. So I'll put the sell price of 4580, hit my enter key, and then everything will be recorded for me. So we'll click on save trade. And now this trade has been moved down to the close trade section here. So looking back here on the chart of this of this last trade that I showed you here is that we got a buy signal here on this bar and the point of using a money management program to help manage the trade is that once you've done the hard work of deciding where to get into the trade the money management program will tell you how many shares to buy and exactly where you need to exit out and what it does is it takes you out of the factor it's a much much more objective way to trade your account and at that point you you're no longer looking at the indicators to decide when to get out of the trade. You're looking at the value of the account to tell you when to get out of the trade. So with this program, you're really wearing two hats. The first hat that you're wearing is as of a trader. And as a trader, you're going to decide what the best method is to trade your account, where to get into the trade, and then the manager side is going to help you determine how many shares you're going to buy and then where to get out of that trade. Now let me show you an example of how to actually sell a security short. In this chart we're taking a look at a security called Centerpoint Energy. We've got a very popular trading strategy applied to the chart called the RMO. And what we have here on this last bar of the chart is a sell signal based on the RMO. You'll see that the RMO is just turning to the downside or negative. We've got a red price bar and we have a downward pointing red arrow. So based on that information, I'm going to take a trade on this and let's see what the date is. The date is January 5th, 2012. So let's see how we would enter this into JBL. Again, first thing we do is we click on the new trade button. Up at the top of this dialog, this time we click on the short box here so it knows that we're going to be selling the security short. The symbol on this one is CNP. The sector is going to be energy. The notes down here, I'm going to tell it that I'm selling this security short based on an RMO signal. The sell date for me is going to be January 6th. We're look, the chart was updated through January 5th. That's the date that we got the sell signal. So we're going to sell it short on the opening of the next day. Again, that's going to be January 6th. We'll click on OK. The last closing price was 1980. So based on that information and the cash that we have available in the account, it's recommending that we sell short 96 shares. So I'll enter that into the quantity and hit my enter key. And then you'll see our initial stop is set at 2211. 
So in other words, our maximum risk now is set at a little over $200, $201.91. So we'll click on the Save Trade button. So now I'll add another day to our data file to see how this would have worked on the day that we actually placed the trade. Once the data has been updated, I'll refresh the data, open up the trade, and now you'll see we've got some information here again. So let's say that we got in at the opening price of January 6th, so we sold it short at 1977. So I'll update the price here to reflect that. Hit my enter key. And you'll see that our stop now is actually set at 2020. The reason being is, is that we sold it short at 1977, and our break even was at 1956, and we already traded through that level. So our stop has been adjusted to the closest price, which in this case is the ATR stop at 2020. So again, we can adjust our stop to that level. And again, let's add some more data to this trade to see how this one would have played out. So I'll save the trade, update the data. And once the data has been updated, I'll click on Refresh Data and open it back up. Now you, again, you see we've got quite a bit more information here as we kind of scroll down, we see how this played out. And then we got an exit signal here on February 3rd. So let's say that we took that exit signal and we got out at the opening of the next day, which would have been February 6th at 1885. So I'll click on the buy date box here and I'll change that to February 6th. Click on OK. We'll say the buy price was at the opening, which was 1885. Hit my enter key, and then our information's been saved for us. We'll click on our Save Trade button, and now what we've got is now we can actually see how our trades are working out. Down here is a summary of these two trades that we've closed out so far. We've closed two long trades, we've closed one long trade, and one short trade. And here you can see more specifics on those particular trades. We have the number of trades that it won, how many were lost, the totals, and so forth. And over here on the right-hand side, it's even calculating for us the trade expectancy, which in this case was $82. And also another thing that will help you compare how your portfolio is doing is down here at the bottom, you have a button called Compare. And what you can do is you can select an index maybe that you want to compare your portfolio to. So for example, you just navigate to where your data again is stored. So I've got some index data underneath a folder called My Stock, so I'll select that. And then the symbol that I want to compare it to is the S&P 500, and the symbol is .SPX. And now you'll see down here in the bottom here that since our first order, which in this case was December 22, 2011, the S&P over that period of time is up 11.8%. And up here underneath our account, you can see that our account is up 1.64%. And when comparing that to the S&P, we've underperformed the S&P by 10%. So the whole idea here is by trading or benchmarking it against the S&P, it gives us a very good idea how we're doing as compared to the overall performance of the index itself. Now something else that might be helpful for you is that if you click on the settings button here, inside this window there's a button there called RTC. RTC stands for Risk Tolerance Calculator. And if you click on this, this is actually will open up a spreadsheet which will help you calculate some really useful information. Now if you have troubles opening up that spreadsheet by clicking on that button, you can open up the spreadsheet manually because the spreadsheet gets installed in the program file for you. So for example, what you can do is you can open up your Excel spreadsheet, click on File, then Open, and just navigate to where the file is installed. And by default, it's installed underneath your C drive, and then Program Files, and then JBL Risk Manager. And underneath that particular folder, you'll find a spreadsheet called the RiskExpect.xls. So I'll open that up, and that'll load the spreadsheet for us. Now the spreadsheet's actually a pretty handy little device here, and what this will help you do is help identify how losses actually affect your account. So let's say, for example, that we start off again with a $10,000 account, and our brokerage charges us $10 for an entry and $10 for an exit. Underneath the maximum risk, we can put in the amount that we'd be willing to risk per position. So let's say, for example, we take the program's recommendation, which is 2%. 
we can see how that would affect our account. Now what these numbers are showing us over here on the left hand side are the number of losing consecutive trades. So if we lost this number of consecutive trades in a row, we could find out exactly how that would affect our account. So let's just take a look at the first one. And the first one is saying that if we lost 2% on our account, we would have had trading losses of $180 plus $20 in brokerage fees, $10 entry, $10 exit, for a total loss of $200. That would draw our account down to $9,800, we'd have 98% of our account left and we would have lost 2%. So these numbers again over here on the left hand side are consecutive losses and we can see how this would have played out. So for example, if I had 20 consecutive losses losing 2% on every transaction, my account would be down to $6,600 and I would have 66% of my account left and I would have lost 33%. So if I scroll down here just a little bit further, you can see that on trade number 35, if I had 35 consecutive losers in a row, that's the point where I would have lost 50% of my account. So now let's go ahead and take a look at another calculation. Over here on the right hand side, let's say that we're willing to risk a little bit more. and Let's say we're willing to risk 5% on every transaction. Let's see how that would affect our account. So if I enter in the 5 in that box, hit my enter key, you'll see how that would have played out and in this case if I would have had for example 14 losing trades in a row that's the point if I was risking 5% on every transaction where my account would have lost 50% of its value. So taking a look at this information and seeing how these percentages affect your account can be really eye-opening if you haven't done this before. And to take this a little bit further this box right here this will help calculate how much you need to recover if you lose a certain percentage. So let's say for example that we lose 20 percent of our account. What this will calculate is the return that I would need to get in order to get that 20 percent back into my account. And this number grows exponentially. So if I lost 20 percent I need to get 25 percent back. Well if I lose 50 percent of my account now I need to get back 100 percent. So the point being is that it's extremely important to manage these losses. We can't let these losses get away from us because if we dig ourselves a deep enough hole, we're going to have a heck of a time getting out of that hole. Now here's another spreadsheet that's included for you. If you click down here at the bottom called Compound Growth, this is how much your account will grow based on different percentage levels. So again, let's say that we're starting off with a $10,000 account. And let's say we manage a modest 2% growth per month. It doesn't sound like much, but let's go ahead and enter it in and see how that affects our account. If we were able to do 2% in our account per month, over a 1-year or 12-month period, our account would be up to $12,682 for a return of 26.8%. That's just coming back with a 2% growth rate. So now let's play around with this for a little bit and let's say that we were able to achieve a 5% growth rate per month. If we were able to generate a 5% return on our account every single month, you can see how this would affect our account as well. And after 12 months, our account would now be worth almost $18,000 for an almost 80% return. And this again is an important thing to understand is that we don't have to hit home runs every time. If we can consistently make a decent return on our account, it can really add up over a period of time. So this spreadsheet is included with your program, so take a look at it. I think it can be really helpful.